Hey everybody and welcome to the next episode of It's Bananas with Jeremy Fisher. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Uh, this happens every Monday at 9 a.m. Uh, so don't forget to uh, like and subscribe to check out all the new comedians that are going uh, to be coming out. Got a little flustered there. Um, on this episode, we have a very special guest. I say that every episode because every guest is special. Thank you. you I, have, I have Dan Belkin <laughs> coming on. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much for, yeah, for no tuning in. Um, Toronto comedian. How long have you been doing this for, Dan Belkin? I've been in stand-up for almost six years now, but yeah. in Toronto for... A year and a bit. Okay, so where were you doing comedy before that? I was on the West Coast. I was on the island, okay. Vancouver Island, uh, in Victoria. Mm -hmm. um, it's a great, it's a great place. Uh, lots of hippies. Yeah. Um, and uh, it's just like it's a slower lifestyle, uh, and uh, it's a good, it's a good place to start. I think. You think so? Yeah, yeah. Why not? What about it? over here now? You think it's a good spot to start in Toronto as well? Yeah, I think yeah. I think anywhere in Canada you could pretty much start. And be okay just because it's it's not crazy. Like you go to the states, for example, and you go to like LA or New York, and and you see like the the comics there who are even good, who are like who could be headliners here, and they're they're having trouble, you know. Really? Uh, oh yeah, because it's like such a huge scene that's in there, and like everybody's so much more competitive when they're yeah. in the US because they're fighting for money, whereas here we're just fighting for stage time. Yeah, I think I think Canada is like. Uh, it's like the minor leagues, you know, you can go pretty much anywhere, and it's like, even if it's Toronto, it's like still, it's just a good minor league team, you yeah. know, <laughs> but, it's, but we have some really good comics, it's just that they also leave eventually. Yeah, too. eventually, but that's yeah. just like the thing with Canadian comedians, it's like, yeah. if they want to get money, they have to leave. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's like, just the way that it goes. It's like wrestlers, you're like, oh, what happened to him? Oh, he went to wrestle in Japan, it's the same thing. Where's he now? Oh, he's uh, in London, or <laughs> LA, or something. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's funny when people ever mention, like, London, and you're like, London, Ontario, or London, like the good at London. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's like the London Ontario is never known as the good London. I I think yeah, if I you know if I knew a comic who went to London mm -hmm. uh, and 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 was like making it and uh, and I assumed that you know it was going to be London UK and it turned out to be London Ontario. Yeah. Um. I I think I would find that more inspiring. Yeah. You think? So? Yeah. Yeah. Why not make it in a small city? Yeah. A small town. It, with the internet, you think it'd be possible, but I still don't know very many people who do it, mm -hmm. who like live, say, in Victoria. Uh, yeah. There's one guy, but he's he's not a stand-up, but he has a YouTube channel. Um, it's called something. It's like one of those explained videos where they explain things. Okay. And, and uh, he makes funny funny videos. It's all like stickman and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and and maybe you can include links after. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, if you send them to me, I'll definitely put them in the description below. Yeah, he, ha he has all, like millions of, of views, and and he's full time making money just off that, and he lives in Victoria, you know. But he's yeah. not a stand-up. So interesting. Yeah. yeah. So how did you get started in like stand up? Mm. So I did uh, I did improv for a bit. Okay. Um, and um, did I, you go to school for doing improv? No, I went to school for computer science. Okay. And how yeah. how was that? <laughs> uh, I did seven years. Yeah. Yeah. Is there like something that you wanted to do, or you're like, <laughs> you know what? It's just paying the bills, really, and that's what um, I wanted to do. I, I did enjoy it. I, yeah. I feel I feel like there are parts that I enjoyed more, parts that I enjoyed less. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I enjoyed working my own more. I enjoyed lectures a little less. Um, I enjoyed like more like working on on projects and like studying for exams or stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So there are parts that I enjoyed. Um, I stretched it out because I was doing so much other stuff other than school. So like going and, and doing improv or uh, just hanging out at shows and stuff like that mm -hmm. and so I was like oh, I'll just take less courses I'll do it slower I ended up doing like I said like seven years no. uh, <laughs> but it's okay I finished it and yeah. um, and it worked out uh, and then from improv basically I did it for a while like I did it for like four maybe maybe even five years mm -hmm. um, from the time I was like 18 through the time I was 22 23 and then I started doing stand up maybe sometime in, in that time maybe kind of both at the same time, mm -hmm. um, and it was just like, <laughs> it was like, the, the two for a while were kind of wrestling each other, like a, like I was missing some open mics because I had improv things, mm -hmm. and that made me feel really bad, really? but, but it, didn't, it didn't feel as bad when I missed like improv for stand-up, so it was like, it was kind of like an arm wrestling match between the two, yeah. and one was like my left hand fighting my right hand, that's yeah, what exactly. it felt like, I still like both hands, but I prefer the right hand, because mm -hmm. that's the hand I touch myself with. Exactly. You know, yeah. You don't alternate. <laughs> oh, I wow. mean, you gotta you gotta alternate. Sometimes I, like... I throw improv in a little bit, 
you know, for, for like, oh, I'll do it once in a while. I'll go to a jam or something. That's kind of like that. Yeah, okay. Yeah, Perfect. Yeah. You that gets me off a little bit. I feel like, yeah. you know, it's, it'll feel like a little bit of a stranger danger kind of situation. But yeah. it's just like, you know what? I feel comfortable using my other hand. <laughs> I actually did uh, an improv gig a while back. So I, I, like, I still do it. I yeah. just, I'm just not very active. So I'll, I'll do it once a month or something like that. Okay, just to uh, kind of keep it fresh. Well, I, I do these uh, things that are like murder mysteries. Okay. You know, so there's this company and uh, people hire them to put on uh, entertaining events for mm-hmm. like Christmas and uh, work parties and stuff like that. Are you like always the murderer? Uh, no. I look like you could be one I, every time. <laughs> I, I know. I know. And they, they have to guess. And every time on the scorecards, it's like... And they always put the... Okay. It's like the dude that looks like a murderer, that's the murderer. And it's never it's never me. Um, uh, just they don't think my improv skills are good enough. Oh. <laughs> but <laughs> but, but um, no, I, it's never me. Uh, it's uh, I always play like the dude that gets killed first. Yeah. Um, and they always they always still pick me as the murderer even though I'm, I'm dead. Um mm-hmm. It's so so we go uh, to these like work parties usually around Christmas time and then New Year's when they put them on. Okay. And, and there's usually like a loose script and we and we kind of improvise around and we know who the murderer is that set up in the beginning, but you know sort of the interactions with the audience and as we progress this storyline is is very loose. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we also sometimes they'll hire us just to do like regular improv games. Um, and so it's, you kind of, uh, you get an email maybe at the beginning of the month saying they're mm-hmm. casting these dates or whatever. So I replied and I got booked for just like a straight improv games gig and I haven't done improv in maybe like, I don't know, four or five, six months, something mm-hmm. like that. It's been a while. Yeah. And, uh, usually when I do it, it's people who are actors who are like, uh, not necessarily like improv heads, like mm-hmm. they know how to do improv. They've done it before. But it's like not. But this time, I got I got there. I'm meet, meeting the other people. I don't really know who they are, mm-hmm. and they're all like really. They're improvisers. They're either with Second City or with Bad Dog Theater. These are like the local improv mm-hmm. places, and they're they're improvisers to the core, you know. Yeah. And they're like, oh, so like, well, what do you do? I'm like, I'm a stand up comic, and there's definitely disdain in the two communities. It's not overt because there's crossover. There's people. Yeah, who do I've heard work. a lot about like how improv people hate the stand up comedian and like group. There's just, a little bit, a little bit, yeah, for sure. For sure. Like, why? Why can't we all just like each other and be friends? Well, it's a completely uh, different process, I yeah. think. Like for for the stand up comic, I I think. It's just you, mm-hmm. you know? And then with the improv team, it's like, it's the collective and you have to like somehow find a way to fit in, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, so we, we get to the, we get to the gig uh, and it's all, it's four, four people. One of them is like a director of the, of the improv program at this place. Another place is like an actor at Second City, mm-hmm. uh, you know, an improv actor. Another person is like a sketch person. And, and we get there and we go in and it's just a it's just a restaurant room there's no like stage or anything yeah. we go up uh, like four of us and the main person starts introducing it and I have this feeling oh like I'm gonna pass out <laughs> <laughs> like I feel I feel like the most anxiety I've felt in a long time I don't feel like that when I do stand up yeah. and I didn't feel like that when I did improv so it was a strange it was a strange feeling um, because I don't remember ever feeling like that but just in that moment I felt like uh, imposter syndrome yeah you know like when I'm like oh, I'm, I shouldn't be like these people are really good yeah like they're actually putting a lot more time and effort than yeah, I'm putting in yeah, here yeah, I'm just, yeah, yeah. like the last time I did this was six months ago so yeah. really like exactly. I'm just doing this for the money really <laughs> yeah pretty much but then again you have those other actors that are kind of like that just swoop in and they just do it for the money exactly because, like, That's... They, they take a one improv class at like Second City let's say and you're like oh I'm an improv perfectionist I used to hate those people and then I'm like how did I become this person I I'm exactly to... what I hated I used to be the person that like inhaled improv I would like read books about improv I read you know watch Tina Fey interviews I was like yeah. improv all the way and then as that kind of faded out um, I slowly became the person that's like a gig comes through I'm like oh yeah I can do this I'll take yeah. it um, and then I got there and I had like this overwhelming feel- feeling of anxiety mm-hmm. um, and we started doing it and we got we got our suggestion for our scene or whatever. Yeah. And the anxiety went almost like away right away. And I just stepped out. I was the first person on stage, and I started doing the scene. And I'm like, who's this guy? I'm not, I'm like having an outside out of body experience. Uh, and I had like the most confidence. And like for 15 seconds, it went really well. And then the other actor on stage said something I didn't really understand. Mm-hmm. Like I didn't really get. I didn't understand what they were saying. Mm-hmm. I was trying to like progress it say yes to it but i didn't really know what they were saying yeah um 
the words didn't make sense. Yeah. It, and the panic came back. And I remember, like, uh, it was set up in, like, a coffee shop. Mm -hmm. I remember my, as in character, I, I called in for my boss to come in and deal with this customer. Because as the real Dan, I didn't understand what they were saying. Yeah. So, um, uh, yeah, so that kind of, we went through a couple scenes and it was mm -hmm. a little bit of that where uh, there was like waves of confidence and I, I can do this. Mm -hmm. And then, and then just like um, being overcome with a sense of uh, loss <laughs> and knowing that you're like, oh, I'm shouldn't, I shouldn't be here. But then it, it ended and it was all good. Um, and I was driving back with the, with the people and they were all, they seemed all pretty happy. So I feel like I, I, I snuck by and it was okay. Mm -hmm. And I would do it again in the future. But um, I feel like if I had something like that come up, I would go like practice a couple times, like a jam or something. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It'd be nice to even get like some comedians together and just like kind of do like a whole improv group, just like kind of shooting the shit with each other, getting that like out of your head. So I think it'd help a little bit, especially with like stand up comedy, because like the moment you get it like stuck in your head, it's just like shit, like I'm freezing up, I'm tensing up, like I need to talk about something. And I feel like improv would at least help a little bit with that, especially with like engaging the audience. And you like, you, you host your own show like in too deep. Uh, mm -hmm. you do yeah. bi-weekly and so does that like do you think that like, improv actually helps you like oh, with hosting the show or is it I think the the main idea in improv is like to say yes and then and then whatever the idea is mm -hmm. and then further it by saying and yeah, right mm -hmm. that's very useful I yeah. think so say you're hosting or something and, and then and then you're you're going and you're talking to the audience you're talking to somebody and you ask them what they're doing and, and they give you something like oh I work in an office and you, you could you could say okay mm -hmm. and take it like a step further relate to your own experience or uh, if you've worked in an office or something like that or or um, just keep or just or just make a judgment even yeah. if it's wrong okay. even if it's like even if uh, oh so you just photocopy all day like it doesn't <laughs> matter you just say anything yeah. even if the audience doesn't relate to it doesn't laugh at it because mm -hmm. then you yes and that you know so that's very useful okay um, that structure in itself but in terms of like um, doing stories or like scenes and playing games and stuff like that I found that that's a completely different muscle like yeah. the way I get laughs in stand up. Mm -hmm. Um, is different than the way I would get laughs in a scene, for yeah. example. In a scene, uh, it, it would be much more about, oh, I'm, I'm like playing a character or mm -hmm. something like that. I said something in character that made sense with this very specific reference in the story, you yeah. know? Uh, as opposed to like the way I, I, I get laughs in stand-up is I think through saying something that people can feel and like, relate to and, and okay. like, oh, that's true. Uh, and it was put in a way that uh, is kind of funny. You yeah. Know. So, so what about like your characters that you create for stand up specifically? Even they, those characters that I create for stand up, mm -hmm. I think are really just like extensions of myself. Yeah. As opposed to like in improv, I'll contort my body and I'll do something weird, you know, mm -hmm. just to be a character or yeah. like to fit into a storyline. If there needs to be like a goblin, I'll be a goblin. You yeah. know? <laughs> um, but I, I've tried at the beginning when I started doing stand up, I tried coming in with, like, a character and doing it kind of, like, in character, mm -hmm. coming in with kind of, like, a weird, like, quirky goblin. But it's, it just doesn't work. I feel like... Uh, I've Unless seen... it's, not, like, tr not true to yourself, and you're kind of, like, maybe... Yeah. Like, this isn't really who I am, and I kind of feel like the audience wouldn't connect to that, because they're like, this guy doesn't... This isn't him. Yeah, there's there's some people that can do character stand-up, uh, and it's really good, I think, because they have, like, a really, like, smart takes on stuff. Yeah. But if you just did your own takes that you would do in your own stand-up... Uh, but in character, I found that uh, you know, just just, just put, pull away the character, just do it as yourself. Yeah, you know, unless the takes that you're doing are very specific to the to the character, and they need to be like smart like that in character. Yeah. then it makes sense. Other than that, I feel I feel like you just shed the character, just do it as yourself. These are your takes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. Um, mm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's pretty much it for that. So yeah, you have your you have your own show in too deep. So I feel like we want to promote that a little bit. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, I yeah. So I don't know when this is releasing, but I'll, I'll do the most. Uh, the next date is uh, January eighteenth. Eighteenth. Yes, eighteenth. Are you sure about that? On Thursday. Yeah. Okay. Do you have a poster? <laughs> we do. We do have uh, a poster. I can you, get it right here. Yeah, I wanna. This is your. Oh, that's my poster. Sorry, sorry. I have, okay. I have, I have, Somewhere I have. around there. Yeah, we can break down. Do you want to do a uh, review of this poster? Oh, it's totally do a review yeah. of the poster. Yeah, so this is this is the poster. In, in too deep. As you see, there's a crease here because it was in my backpack. Yeah, he does not keep it professionally held together. Yeah, yeah and well, you can see uh, 
There's a, you know, there's a character and, and they're wearing... Crying. Looks yeah. like they're crying heavily. Yeah, they're or crying. Their, like their feelings are weird. coming out of them and they're being drowned by their feelings. Is that an open bottle? Shouldn't it be like filling up with water? Um, How is the phone floating? Well, actually, <laughs> if you pay close attention, it's uh, it's three parts of bottles separated by water. The water, oh, the, okay. the feelings are so actually heavy and icy. It's not just regular water; it's icy water. It cut mm. the bottle in three parts, but but not the cigarette. Just, the yeah, cigarette okay. it didn't. It just like yeah. stood there, and yeah, yeah, yeah. You got a nice, nice slice of pizza you got there going on. Yeah, yeah. Does the place even have food? The the place yeah. sometimes they get a person coming in a chef oh okay. and, and they, this is not a bit this is real this is yeah yeah he comes in and he does like he he will make food if you order it um but it's on special nights so sometimes you get lucky in those special nights they kind of yeah. coexist but, but other a, than that it's just yeah. drinks that they have there yeah but yeah it's a it's a pay where you can't show it's by donation and we have a pretty good lineup and you say the eighteenth it's the sixteenth right here you're right it's the sixteenth how dare you. <laughs> It's going to be on the 16th, guys. It's the 16th. It's definitely the 16th. Yeah. Not the 18th. <laughs> the one after that is going to be February 20th, plus okay. or minus two days. Okay. Yeah. Plus or minus. <laughs> You're not sure yet? <laughs> no, it's going to be a Thursday. I think that's the 20th. Okay. But if they want to find out more, it can go to uh, our page on Instagram, In yeah. Too Deep. In Too Deep? Just yeah. Straight like that? All right, perfect. I'll have that in the description below. Yeah, that for sure. For sure. For sure. Yeah, so this is the poster. Awesome. Yeah. I like it. If you ever need any more posters, let me know. I do them as well. If you guys want any posters for your stand-up comedy shows, let me know. I do them as well. All right. Should we do a review of your poster? Uh, I mean, you can't... I don't have it printed out. Oh, okay, okay. And okay. I can't really... Unless okay. you pull it up on, like, Instagram or something. Yeah, why not? And I you mean, could put an image on there? I mean, I could put, like, an image... I could, like, superimpose an image over your face or something of just, like, the poster. And this is my poster, everybody. Look at it. It's so lovely. <laughs> okay. Well, whatever you prefer. We could. I mean... Well, do you want to pull it up on Instagram? You can sure, check out. Sure, sure, sure. I just posted on um, on my um, other graphic design. I just created a graphic design page. So if you guys want to check that out, it's called Night and J. Because um, I thought that was cute. I, I think I called it Night and J Graphics. Or Graphic. Or Designer. I don't know. Night and J. Just, yeah, just Night and J. Nice. All right. So if you go to my store, you can actually like find that post that I made. Uh, next one. Next one. Yeah, right there. So, so if you click on that. There's like a couple of them in there. All right. Yeah. So that was that first one that I did. Yeah. So night and J dot designs is my Instagram for my graphic design. So if you guys want any like logos, you want some graphic like posters or whatever you want, like just send me a message and I'll, uh, I'll do whatever you guys would like me to do graphic design wise. Cause I love Photoshop. I love illustrator. Even if you want like a cool like thirty second commercial or something, like I'm I'm cool with doing that as well. I like this one. This one's called the Joke Depot. It's a show that happened on Friday, October fourth. Yeah. It's it's got Quincy Martin, uh, and he's in a in a Home, Home Depot. Depot. Yeah, it's apron. funny. It's funny because I was actually like a fat white guy that I got. Yeah. So I'm just like, eh, he's got like the same kind of body build as, uh, as you Quincy. call him Quincy fat. Well, like a, a little bit heavier set, you know, I always thought of him, but as I like... mean like it, it perfectly suits him for yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. And like the hands were in the pocket suits. So I'm like, perfect. You don't have to get rid of the white hands. Right on. How'd like, you, how'd you get on the apron? There's oh, a, that's just a joke. Deep, uh, yeah. I photoshopped that shit. Yo, cool. Very Hell, yeah. Cool. Very cool. Good job. Yeah. So if you guys want to check out these posters, definitely go on, uh, go on night and J and you can see all of them. That yeah. one I did, uh, for, the comedy bar one I did as a as a freebie because um, Kyra I think her name's Kyra from she's a VP of Yuck Yucks and she asked me to like do one of her graphic design posters mm -hmm. but when I when Pat you know who Pat Thornton is Pat Thornton yes yeah so when he ended up like because he was doing the twenty four hours yeah, of comedy yeah. thing so he ended up like posting like a picture of a different poster and I'm like what the shit like why did she get me to do a poster for it if she's not going to use it. And I had the feeling that maybe she just got, like, a whole bunch of people to do it for free mm -hmm. so that when the time came, like, oh, let's pick over whoever did the best work for free. Cool. And you won that. No, I didn't win that. She ended up picking somebody else's poster. Oh. But I just put that one up because Should I Should we review like, there? Oh. Should we just shit on their poster? I mean, their poster is pretty fucking Let's see. Let's see lie. their poster. It was um, it was a robot that had, like, Pat Thornton's head on, on top oh, of it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That. That's pretty, yeah, yeah. It was a pretty good one. So I'm like, you know what? I, I, I have no doubt that they would have chose that one. Yeah. But even still, I'm probably not going to do free work because that actually does take time out of out of my life. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, eh, no more free work for people. Yeah. So no free work. Only paid opportunities. And I still have to collect from Johnny Rogers, Fatty Nassar, and, and Robbie Hollywood for that. Uh, my daughter's a communist. Check it out. 
um, check out their Instagram. My daughter's a communist, a new podcast that started up by all three of them. Yeah. So I did like a little poster for them cool. where it's just like them inside. Uh, they were, they're wearing like, um, uh, USSR like, uh, outfits mm-hmm. and they got like a little girl, like a Russian, um, I can't support that, but okay. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> as a, as a child of former Soviet yeah. escapees, yeah. uh, <laughs> can't support no i'm kidding it's, yeah. i'm gonna i'm gonna check it out yeah yeah awesome yeah. i have no idea why they called it that it's just the name apparently they're gonna reveal it after a million followers so i mean if they eventually get up to a million people they'll know eventually release it but you're gonna tell what the joke is yeah, yeah. why they called it that cool. Cool. but did you uh so did you, were you um like born here or did you no you were born um in russia or? no okay <laughs> where so, were you born so let us know that story yeah my parents are like soviet jews okay um uh so they uh my dad is from kiev ukraine and my mom is from Crimea. okay and then uh when the soviet union was falling apart they kind of they kind of ran away mm-hmm. um a lot of jews were leaving at this time because it was like the first time uh or like one of the few times that the board kind of opened, you know, yeah. the iron curtain leaf lifted. Yeah. Um, and so uh, one of the easiest places that they could go was Israel because they were taking in Jews because they need more, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, never deal with enough Jews. <laughs> yeah, they're like, we need more Jews in here, you know. Um, and then <laughs> all the Jews were like, well, we, we need somewhere to go. And yeah. so all these Jews from the Soviet Union came. And then later, the same thing happened in other countries, like in Ethiopia, there's a bunch of Jews that came from Ethiopia. So there's like these waves of immigration at different times mm-hmm. that came to Israel. My, my parents were part of this sort of like uh, people who came from the Soviet Union. Yeah. So that's where I was born. I was born in Israel. Um, and uh, we lived there until I was 11 mm-hmm. and then we immigrated to Richmond, BC. Okay. Yeah. Um, How was that experience like moving from one country to another at that age? Yeah. Uh, I mean, I honestly, like, <laughs> arriving in Richmond, I, I was surprised because I didn't know what Canada looked like. I kind of imagined what I saw, like, America on TV, kind mm-hmm. of, like, white and black, but Richmond was very Asian. So, yeah. <laughs> um, so like, that was, I didn't even know uh, when we arrived in the airport in Vancouver, YVR, which is in Richmond, and we came out, mm-hmm. and in arrivals, you see, uh, you know, people mostly from, from China, Hong Kong, kind of waiting for, uh, you know, the, the people who are coming in from the planes. Yeah. Uh, it's just, it's just like what seems like 100, 200 people. Uh, and coming out of that, I was like, oh, must, must be like a busy flight day from like Hong Kong or China. Mm-hmm. And then we, we drive into the city and like there's signs in Mandarin and there's like, uh, s- you know, stores there are completely Mandarin. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm just sleepy, so I'm thinking, oh, this might be like Chinatown or something. Uh, and then, and then I like sleep over, uh, you know, the jet lag and stuff. We wake up the next day, and as I'm getting more acclimated in that first week, uh, it sort of kind of dawns on me, like, oh, this is Canada. Like, this yeah. is what it looks like. Um, this part right here is very Asian. You go over there, and it's and it, completely it, different. Completely <laughs> different, um, and it's not at all like America. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh yeah, for yeah. Sure. <laughs> but then you come to Toronto, so. I had another smaller culture shock like when it came like a year and a half ago mm-hmm. where I was like, oh, here it's like really equal everywhere. Everywhere yeah. you go, you see like all different kinds. There's no like, oh, this part's this and this part's this. Mm-hmm. I hear that more like in the suburbs, like if yeah. you go to like Markham is, is this like thing. All and, Asians. Yeah. You go to like Brampton, like all brown people. But like you in Toronto to, like, Whitby, itself. All white people. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but in Toronto itself, it's very diverse. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. for sure. And that's, I like that, especially mm-hmm. with like doing stand-up comedy. Because I feel like if you can really, like, conquer Toronto and conquer, like, every single room that you go to, you would really have, like, no problem going every everywhere else. I will so say, like, everywhere else. as a white person, you should be careful about using the word conquer. Well, I mean... <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, well, we talk about killing sets, so really, we're talking about murder. <laughs> we're gonna conquer that black room. Yeah, yeah. right? Um, uh, I, uh, I feel like I had a, a good time um, seeing people, comics... Uh, that I wouldn't have seen on the West Coast just because it's so much more diversity. Yeah. Um, like, on the West Coast, we have we have comics, like, of different ethnicities, mm-hmm. but it's still, like, really, like, white-dominated, I think. But here, it seems like, um, like, there's just more. Yeah. Yeah, like, you, you, you're going to see people, you know, who grew up in Trinidad or, you know, in different places, and um, they bring that experience, they talk about those stories, and it's, like, stories that I haven't heard living on the West Coast. So that's mm-hmm. cool. That's yeah, interesting. I like that. I like yeah. that. So, I want to ask you, what has been, like, your most It's Bananas moment that 
that moment where it's just like in your life where like that's that's I can't believe that actually happened right now. Like whether it's like oh, extremely good or extremely bad. Like what what is something that's been like holy crap that's bananas. It's bananas. Yeah. Um, it's bananas. Well, I think there's there's many probably. Um, the first one probably yeah like coming to a different continent. I've never been to North America before mm -hmm. and then moving here. Um, that was one for sure. Okay. And then I've never been here to Toronto east of like Edmonton. I've never been in my whole life in Canada. Mm -hmm. So leaving that bubble, you know, leaving BC and going as far as I have in the country itself. Mm -hmm. um, that was that was different um, and made me learn survival skills Yeah. in a way that I didn't have to even though I didn't live with my parents in BC, mm -hmm. um, I was close enough that I, you know, I could go crash with my parents or something. If I yeah, didn't exactly. Have At least you, like, you have that kind of like support from them. So just in case something actually does happen, like you always have them there for, for, for sure. that kind of support, for sure. which is definitely like really nice. Yeah. Um, so what about in like comedy kind of sense? Like, Conquering the black rooms? No. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <okay. laughs> uh, <laughs> um, are there even any like black rooms? I uh, I don't even think that's a thing. I think there are. I yeah. don't know. I don't know. I um I I think that uh, there's probably producers who put on shows. Um, yeah, like I know Chris Bonaparte does like the All American, yeah. um, like what Black North tour or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, in stand up, uh, I guess the biggest thing there's there's a couple shows where I felt like this year probably this yeah. past year was okay. That that and then I watched the video. I'm still happy. Yeah. Uh, that hasn't happened to me. Like, even when, when I have really good sets, and then I'll watch the video, mm -hmm. and then I still feel bad. Yeah. You know? But you're like, is it like a bad, like, I could do better? Or like, oh, why did I say that? It's more like I could do better. Yeah. Or like, this is not me, mm -hmm. you know? But this year, I've had a couple sets where even after I watch them on the video, I'm like, nice. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I could still be better, but like, um, that's me. Yeah. You know? That's what I wanted to say. Mm -hmm. How I wanted to say it. Yeah. So... Those those are probably the best moments. Or like um, I've had a couple moments where I'll write uh, something down mm -hmm. and then um, I'll just be like r riffing it out. I live with my girlfriend, yeah. so I'll riff it out with her, and I just know like right there. Oh, yeah. that's that's good. Mm -hmm. Like I haven't had that before. It's always been like such a such a like struggle to you know work it out and da da da, da and then. By the time it gets good, it's like a month or two later or something like that. Mm -hmm. I've never had something where I'm like, I know, I know. And I had a couple of those moments this yeah. year where I'm like, that's good. And then I take it to a show, I do it, and I get that same response. That's awesome. Yeah. Do you find like you create like a lot of jokes with uh, being around your girlfriend so much? Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, I think I've always needed to talk it out. So even when I had roommates, for mm -hmm. example, I would bug them and I'd be like, all right. And here... Just uh, explore this idea with me and I'm yeah. kind of like make it funny. For sure. Mm -hmm. Um, and here it's just like that times a hundred. Yeah. You know, which, um, I, I do not envy her. If she had to do that to me and just like every, every couple of hours, Hey, what about, uh, I would go nuts. Really? Yeah. 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 Um, so it's good that she at least has that patience with you and is able to like, okay, I'm going to help him out with this. Yeah. 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 And, and also like, cause I'm pretty funny. You know? yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> he is pretty funny. If you have ever go check out a show, definitely do that. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> I, I vouch for you. Okay. <laughs> Put vouch right there. Thank you. Pop vouch. Um, yeah. Uh, what about you? So, uh, you've probably done a lot of banana moments now because you've done a couple episodes. But, um, oh, okay. Like 20, you're 23, man. I'm 23? I'm you're... Michael Jordan. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Awesome. Um, I'm a big fan of basketball, so 23 has always been a significant number. I think. Has it? Yeah. So, who knows? Maybe this will get 2,300 million maybe or 23 views 23 views just 23 views would be or pretty maybe. nice maybe. i don't i don't know personally 23 people in my life so that's that's nice exactly yeah. there we go yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh i um i was gonna ask you yeah you say banana moment um but what about maybe specifically in stand-up something that was more of like a learning moment so it's not so much a banana moment it wasn't so much like wow i can't believe that happened something that but it was more like oh this is like an obvious lesson and Oh, I, sh I should have learned it, or I, or or I need I need to learn it. Here it is. Here it is in front of me. Yeah, yeah. That was honestly like the day after my very first set uh, was how to hold the mic. 
Oh, yeah? Because I feel like a lot of people just don't know how to hold the microphone sometimes. And the moment that I realized I, I screwed up, the next mm -hmm. show that I went to, I saw how the host was holding the microphone and how, it, like, depending on how they would hold it, because okay. hosts hold it in, like, different ways. Some hold it, like, really close to their mouth. Some hold it, like, up like this, depending on, like, the kind of microphone they're using. Yeah. Or some of them, like, they even have it where, like, they can hold it down here. Yeah. yeah. So, because it's, like, it picks up that well. Yeah. So, that's the first thing that I've that I picked up, that I learned, that it was actually really useful, was how to hold the microphone properly. Okay. And that was just looking at whatever the host was doing, because chances are the host has been there before, and they know how to exactly how to hold, like, hold, like hold the microphone. Okay, cool. Yeah. I, I've i kind of changed it a little bit. I used to, like, rest it on the chin. Yeah. Uh, but now I just kind of hold it kind of here. I don't know. Yeah. Um, I, feel, I feel like... Uh, if I had to think of one that was, like, a recent one for me, mm -hmm. for, uh, for, like, learning... Moments. Learning moments. Um, <laughs> learning moments with us. Learning moments. It's definitely uh, that moment where I realized, oh, you could, you could like laugh on stage. Yeah. You could, you could have fun. That's so obvious, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and you kind of hear people say it in passing, but it was, it was just like maybe seven, eight months ago where I came on stage, didn't have like a particularly good set, and then I was watching uh, my friend Zane. Mm -hmm. um, and hilarious comedian. By yeah, the way. they host it. Like him and Zane host the N2D. Yeah. yeah. And Zane was just crushing. But I was looking at him and he was just like having fun and, and laughing. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, that's so obvious. Why don't, if, if I'm having a good time, why don't I allow myself to laugh actually, the, way, the, way I do, yeah. the way I do normally? Yeah. You know? Like if you were yeah. actually thinking about the joke and you're like, you're laughing as yeah, you're thinking yeah. about it. Exactly. Like why does it have to be an act, you yeah. know? Um, so so that, was, that was definitely like a... Ah, that's yeah. very obvious. Yeah, just enjoy having the time that you're up there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pretty much like what Kevin Hart does every time that he's doing like his performances, any tours that you see him do, like he's always laughing at himself and he's constantly like doing these jokes and it feels like a nice, genuine laugh because he enjoys the material that he delivers. To I've people. seen I've seen a clip online of Chris D'Elia just killing. It's like a the laugh factor. He's just riffing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, just improvising, doing crowd work, but. He's getting big laughs off of just like laughing hysterically, really? and, and to the point where you think like, is this is this just like a button that he presses because he knows he can get laughs? Yeah, you know. Um, and at the same time, like, why wouldn't you? Yeah, you know, it's just laughs. But even like, uh, you gotta love those people that have those funny laughs, like Jacob uh, Jacob Belshin. Uh, okay, yeah, he has a fucking very distinctive laugh every time. Like after he does one of his jokes, he's got like that like high pitch, like <laughs> kind of yeah. like laughing. It's just, it's fucking hilarious every time he does it. And, it really, it's really good to like even get more laughter out of your joke. Yeah, I think just seeing uh, when when a comic is doing well mm -hmm. and and everyone's enjoying it, and then they're getting uh, to enjoy it too. Yeah, everybody feels included. I feel like it stops being like, oh, this is a performance, and it starts being more like, oh, we're just hanging out. Yeah, because like, isn't that ultimately like what you want to do when you're a comedian? It's like you want to mm -hmm. have like a normal conversation because like this. It's For me, I want, want it to be cause, conversational. Because yeah, you want to like connect with the audience. So you, I think you do some it. some people it doesn't work like that. For me. Yeah. Some some people they need, they need it to be. Um you like know, an actual performance? It, need, it needs to be an act, yeah. yeah. Um, but for me, I feel like I need it to be more conversational. Mm -hmm. um, I guess it just depends on like whatever the comedian feels like. Yeah, and I feel like uh, not. it's okay, not everything has to be funny, so like just because I'm enjoying it doesn't mean that I have to laugh at everything. Yeah. I feel like uh, I could be having fun out there and still and still um, like not laugh at every joke I do. Yeah. Because <laughs> that, that's almost like, oh, it can't all be that funny. I've heard these jokes before, even if I'm enjoying myself. Yeah. I can't be surprising myself that much. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. It's Although, what a joy would that be if every time you told a joke, no matter how many times you've done it, mm -hmm. it would take you by surprise yourself. Like, <laughs> I mean, like, unless you have Alzheimer's and you just, for some reason, keep forgetting the jokes, but you remember them somehow. Yeah, yeah. And you're yeah. just like, oh my God, this is fucking hilarious. Yeah. And yeah. then the next time you do, oh my God, this is hilarious. I'm, I'm a natural. <laughs> you just yeah, keep forgetting a, every time. If you have like a teleprompter or something, uh, and it's your words, it's your thoughts, so as you're reading them, you start recognizing them, even if you have some sort of Alzheimer's or something, you yeah. start reading the, uh, the teleprompter, you start recognizing your thoughts, you get into it, you're like really feeling what you're saying to your audience is responding, but at the same time, every new lines that appear on the teleprompter, still a surprise, so you still you still start cracking up in a very yeah. organic way. I think we found a new way to do stand-up, There actually. you go, just get people with Alzheimer's to go over there. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just forget, make Call sure we it, forget. Call it the alt show, alt. but with a Z on the end. Oh, shit. There yeah. we go. Yeah. We just got to find the people that have Alzheimer's. Yeah. I'm, I, I, <laughs> I, I mean... Unless I, you want to give it to yourself. Like, is that... Like, we just give Alzheimer's to our, 
You, I don't think you can inject Alzheimer's. Like, is there? There's got to be some way that you can just force it. You can't happen. I feel like you can't. You're not going to be able to, you know, just have sex with somebody who has Alzheimer's. And now you have well, Alzheimer's. It's not like a disease. Like, yeah, you, like yeah, yeah, yeah. you can transfer to somebody like that. <laughs> Although that would be interesting. Like somebody come up with that kind of technology, just give people with Alzheimer's. I, I, I don't know. Imagine if like we're trying to fight Alzheimer's. <laughs> I know, right? But imagine if like everybody in the world just like had Alzheimer's. So everybody would forget, like, every day, that every day would be, a, like, a new day of just... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you think the world would be peaceful? Because, like, maybe you wouldn't just even have... Everything. You just forget everything else. And it's like, oh, a new day, like... Oh, oh hey, Johnny from I across the street. I don't hate you. Yeah, right? <laughs> Two-state solution. One-state solution. You know, because you just don't remember anything. Yeah. It's great. It's great. Yeah. I wonder how that would work. But they say, they say specifically that, you know, history repeats itself. So that's what we got to pay attention. We yeah. record history. We got to remember... Um, but if you don't remember... If you don't remember, then... On a daily basis, then yeah. history will never repeat itself because you can never go longer than a day. That's true, that's true. So really, whatever happens in that single day... It's like the, uh, that movie Fifty First Dates with Adam Sandler where yeah. he, he's in love with the girl, but she she has memories. Yeah, uh, so it's just like, oh, on a brand new day. And she, he shows her a video every day, yeah. right? Uh, so that she can sort of remember like a quick, her life. Yeah, like a quick recap of like, oh, this is what happened. I don't think it's that quick. I mean, in the movie, it shows so it quick. So you think like... You think like news She's, anchors would be like, "Oh, let's record everything that just had what happened today, so that by the, tomorrow morning we can like release it so everybody." You're gonna have to watch the history of humanity on TV for so every person on Earth would start their day with like several hours of basically watching the news. <laughs> yeah, you know, um, it's like this is exactly what's happened in your location, and you, you want to know more. more. Everything you're like, no, your head just Yugoslavia, <laughs> no, you know, <laughs> yeah, 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 holy shit, yeah, I don't know. Oh. It'd be an interesting idea. I I don't I I think we should strive to remember things um, and record them the way we do in history. Yeah. Uh, but like forgive and forget. You know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. maybe not not uh, forget, but forgive. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. You gotta forget. Everybody yeah. has to forgive. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, why why do you even care so much about like what somebody does? It's just like you don't know like their full story of like what's behind them and like why they did like whatever thing that they did and just just forgive them because they could be going through their own shit like I don't try I try not to hold grudges at all to like anybody because there's no point in like having all that hatred like if you mm. you see me around like I'm a genuinely nice person I like being a nice person to everybody and I give the benefit of the doubt to everybody because like I don't know their backstory yeah unless well, I, I know truly that they've been a dick every single time and I that's try, just like I okay maybe that. it's yeah. hard it's hard you know because yeah. like you Especially like when you meet somebody once, yeah, and like it's it, it could go either way. Then it's not anybody's fault, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and so you have like a maybe a negative experience or something. It's yeah. it's hard to like remind yourself like, oh, you know, whatever. It's not it's not their fault. But mm-hmm. I try. But, but it's, it's a struggle. Yeah. It's a struggle. It's but a struggle. if they're continuing to keep up with that, it's just like there's so much you can do, and it's like you know what? I don't want to be around that. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, right? for sure. Yeah. Let's talk about some of the stuff that's going on in the news. Yeah, for sure. Still got those Australia fires. They've finally been... Uh, I think they've all been put out. I'm pretty oh, sure. All the fires have been put out? I've, I think so. I think that's what they said. Cool. But there's been like over, what, a billion animals that have died? Jeez. I didn't even know Australia had that many animals. That's incredible. That's that's more. That's like the population of humans in China. Exactly. Just yeah. all being burned. So that's right. insane. It just shows you like... Um, how we see ourselves as like a better species yeah. as humans um, because if something like that happens like a billion people that that would be a, that would be a you know a catastrophe I mean, or a pandemic or something yeah yeah because yeah. people that's uh, that's also been like a speculation because they said in like oh 1920 there was a big like epidemic and in like 1820 there was also another big like black plague mm-hmm. so it's just like is um, it, was that a billion people black plague I don't probably not but I mean like yeah, yeah. you gotta think if something that that happens every like 100 years like is something bad gonna happen this year or is it going to be like World War? It's like, oh, mm-hmm. that's going to happen. Yeah. Damn. But, yeah. But it's crazy with like these Aus- like Australian fires because there's been like so many people that have been arrested mm-hmm. for starting those kind of fires. Oh, really? Yeah. Like for flicking cigarettes and stuff? Well, I think they had like intentionally fucking started that. Oh my God. Yeah. It's terrible. And like actually like conspiracy theory time. I, actually, I was reading some other um, th- uh, posts that people were putting out. Saying that there's, um, they're like Australia's creating like a new hyperloop to go around like all the major cities that are in like that area that was like mainly set on fire. So, that, like, in that same like area that people were lighting fires, it's the same area that the hyperloop's going in. 
So they just like what is a hyperloop? It's that like really fast like train that can. So they were gonna do one. They're gonna do one in like Canada, I think, sometime where it goes from like Toronto to Montreal in half an hour. What? So yeah. So instead of like spending fucking four hours on a via rail train, it'd be in half an hour. So you could actually live in Montreal and spend the exact same amount of time, go faster than like the fucking go trains. That's insane. Yeah. So that's pretty much like what they're doing with Australia. Like they they had that proposed in Australia to have that hyperloop to go from like Melbourne. So this was like uh, you saying one of the conspiracy theories. It's just like they burned it so that they could clear it for the hyperloop to come in. I see. And you got to think of like all these donations that are now coming in. It's like oh here's a whole bunch of money to build it to re to re- like is that what they're gonna do? Are they gonna replant all those trees mm-hmm. or are they just gonna like oh let's put all that money towards building a hyperloop? Damn, I don't know. I don't know if I believe that because I feel like that. Uh, the cost of those fires and like uh, you know mm-hmm. trying trying to revive all the and because Australia already has endangered species you know yeah. like the koala the koala bears I heard they they lost like a third of their population I mean like fires. there were so many of them that had chlamydia so really that's they're already of, on fire on the inside yeah so exactly like, you're just you're just helping them out a little bit you're you're putting them on fire on the outside as well. And, and the kangaroos, you know, they can just jump all over the fire. Yeah. yeah. They should have punched it or, like, kicked that fire. It's this manian devil. It just create a whirlwind fire. Yeah, where the fuck were all those things? I feel like all the animals are really just well-equipped to fight the fire on their own is what you're saying. Yeah, yeah okay. I think so. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't... I, I feel like they... I don't believe conspiracy theories like that because the scope of, like, everybody that needs to be lying in order for that to work out that way... Yeah. It's just like... <laughs> it's just like, oh, so, like, everyone's in on it, you know? But who knows? You, no one ever, ever knows. You got all this fake news. Apparently, I was reading this one post. I don't know if it's fake news, but they were teaching kids how to understand fake news. Really? And how to, like, how to, like, take, the, how to, like pick it out. Like, yeah, like, make sure you, like, look up the other sources that they're referring to and seeing if so it's much actually, work. It is a lot of work, right? Yeah. So, do you just accept the fake news? I think this is what I'll do is uh, I'll put on, like, CBC or something. Yeah. And I'll be, you know, and then I'll put like, instead of like checking out the sources that they use, yeah. I'll put on like more extreme ones. I'll like, put on like, like Fox News <laughs> and maybe like, you know, I don't know, like uh, BBC or some hipster one, you yeah. know. And then I'm like, okay, what are the differences in what they're saying? It's somewhere in the middle. It's an approximation. Yeah. And then, and then that approximation is what I'm going to believe. Interesting. Even though it's not so really back like You pick like the middle ground of like, eh, like this somewhere is somewhere there. Yeah. It's somewhere there. I don't know. It's going to be so much effort for me to really find out what the truth is. And even then, I'm not going to know. So mm-hmm. I'm going to say it's somewhere in the middle of these viewpoints. Yeah. And then that average is like a plus or minus. Mm-hmm. You know, I could be wrong. Yeah. Do you watch uh, John Oliver? Uh, this week with John Oliver? Yeah. Yes, I do find that his is more comedic, though. Like, I, I wouldn't lean on that for news. Yeah, but I mean, he does have a whole bunch of people that actually do all the research, and he, like, helps, like, do all that and figure all that stuff out, mm-hmm. which I think is, like, really cool, because, like, not a lot of people actually go thoroughly in-depth with, like, a whole bunch of, like, research papers and, like, figuring out everything about, like, a specific topic. Yeah. Which I actually like, and, like, he starts shit with other people. Like, he's been, like... like uh, almost sued by a couple people yeah, uh, that, that. that happens. Like, even in, with um, Australia, like, Steve Irwin's son, um, like, because he was making fun of, like, the <laughs> club, like the koalas that had chlamydia. Yeah, yeah. And they actually, like, gave him, like, a foundation of, like, John Oliver's, like, koalas with com- uh, chlamydia, <laughs> like, foundation or something like that. That's funny. Yeah. <laughs> I, I heard about that with, um, uh, what's his name? Uh, there's a French comic in Canada, Mike Ward, Mike Ward. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. And he he got in trouble too. But this is on a different scale because uh, John Oliver has an HBO show. Mm-hmm. But have you heard about the Mike Ward story? I don't think so. No. Okay, so he's a French Canadian comic. Yeah. He, he, French Canada is a whole different yeah. universe for, <laughs> yeah, for exactly. comedy. You know, because yeah. they got a good circuit. You mm-hmm. know, they can make money. Uh, they don't have to go to you know. The UK. They don't need to be the wrestler who went, went to Japan, basically. Yeah. You know? <laughs> they can stay there and they can... And Mike Ward is one of those guys. Yeah. He, uh, he, you know, he has a, a good following. He makes a lot of... A, a good, steady living as a, as a headlining comic. Yeah. Uh, but, I don't know, years ago he made fun of this kid who had some sort of disability. I think maybe cerebral palsy. I don't know. Some, some sort of... Disability. I think he might have just been in a wheelchair, maybe. Yeah. And um, the 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 kid's family sued Mike Ward, 
and this went to like the Human Rights Tribunal in mm-hmm. Canada, and then the Human Rights Tribunal uh, basically ruled that Mike Ward needs to pay the family twenty five thousand dollars or something like that. Really? And just so for like making a joke, or was it like on a stand up set, or was it? Just it was like... yeah, it was on a I think on a televised stand up. Okay. Uh, stand up televised TV. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, as that opposed to the stand up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so he had to pay twenty five thousand dollars. He didn't though. I think he's fighting it. He's gonna yeah. appeal it and stuff like that. Okay. But it's sort of it's sort of interesting uh, that these people go after comics or even after John Oliver yeah. or anything like that. But I mean, it's easy money because think about all the people that get sued over the stupidest things these days just because you can get money out of it. Yeah, it's just it's just a quick buck. Yeah, I mean, like whenever I walk in Toronto, I'm just begging people to hit me with their cars so I can <laughs> sue them for easy money. Just, just Cause you know that just people hard are... enough that you can take time off work. Exactly. Yeah. Because yeah. like I know the moment like because like with Toronto, like people don't know how to drive. We're shit. So... I hear that about every city in in uh, Vancouver. It's like ah, nobody knows how to drive here. They haven't had real snow. Anytime there's snow, the city shuts down. You know, and that's it's... pretty much like. Well. That's what I hear about Toronto. Yeah. I'm like, well, the where, mom, where's the, the city where they can drive? Where do you there, go? There is no city where people can drive. In Vienna, everyone drives really nice, actually. <laughs> right. But, like, you got to think of how many, like, they're just giving out these, these driving licenses. Because all you have to do is just, like, one written test. You have to do one test where you sit with a guy beside you. You just have to act like he's a cop. And then you have to do another test where it's the exact same situation. And you can have your full G license. That's it. Damn. You do not have to go to school for any of it. You don't have to do like anything else except for memorizing whatever's going to be on that test, which is like 40 questions. Uh, you have to do like just some basic maneuvers with the guy beside you twice, and that's it. And yeah, I failed it like three times. <laughs> yeah, see? <laughs> I don't know. I feel, I feel like some people naturally are better at those things, you know? Well, yeah. Uh, like they, to them, it's like riding a bike. Mm-hmm. And for me, like I have my my license, I don't drive very often. We have like a car, we use it sometimes. Yeah. And every time, you know, if I've taken a couple months off, it's like it's a frightening experience for for five minutes. Mm-hmm. For five minutes, like. Uh, and then you kind of like ease yourself into it. And yeah. Like, okay. Like, yeah. Kind of like comedy. It's just like once you start getting past that like first couple minutes, you're like, all right, this is nice. I mean, it's not as bad as the crippling anxiety I had doing that one improv set with those yeah. people. <laughs> but. Uh, but yeah, there's there's a little bit like oh I'm in a giant, giant machine that can you know can kill very easily. And you, know? you got to think how many people just quickly got their licenses and they all have giant machines that they're driving around. Yeah, that could just easily kill people. Yeah, for sure. That's that's uh, that's my newest resolution is uh, to never drive this year again. Really? <laughs> I don't know. I just I hate traffic. I hate yeah. all of it. If I can avoid it, that'd be great. Yeah. But I mean, even still, with like doing public transit, that's shady sometimes. Yeah, which is annoying. That's my whole my whole New Year's resolution is just to make like really small achievable yeah. resolutions. Yeah. Do you but, have like any other goals that you have? Yeah, right um, it's not gonna be like the year that I'm gonna take up running or anything like that. <laughs> but it could be it could be the year that like I start uh, lightly jogging for the streetcar. You know, oh, okay. like what, that, whenever I see. Just make a little bit of effort. Doesn't even have to be my streetcar. Any any streetcar, any street. bus. Just start picking sure up the you, pace. A make little sure you bit. do it for the buses, so <laughs> that when they actually pull over, you're like, "No, I just wanted to make sure. I wanted to get my good jog in." Yeah, Thank you. exactly. Like, have them Your friends are like, "What are you doing? We're having a conversation." You're like, oh, "I'm following my goals." You know. Yeah. <laughs> I I I feel like that's still a big because like last 2019, Dan. Yeah. Uh, one time I gave up so hard. Like I saw the streetcar. Across the across the street, and there was the light, and the lights counting down. And I walked so slow. Not only did I miss that streetcar that was ahead of me, I also missed the streetcar behind me. Really? You know, yeah, I missed two, I missed multiple streetcars just because you just didn't. Just I, I just didn't. I didn't even try. Yeah. You know. Well, there you go. You got to try. You got to try. Like Yoda says, "Like there's no try. There's only do. There's only do. Yeah. Exactly. But yeah, small, small, achievable yeah. resolutions. I'm gonna." Uh, get closer to my family but very specifically I'm gonna, yeah. I'm gonna specific family members or yep yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm, my, my parents I'm gonna unhide them from my posts on Facebook okay because I don't post on Facebook anymore so yeah. you know so why why just if I have an event or something I'll unhide that they can see that okay, okay. yeah <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, um, what other ones uh, I think maybe my friend was like you should read a, a new book every year Oh no! Every month you should read. I was going to say like every year. That's how that's long is doable. it going to take you? That's fucking doable. Do- yeah, every year is very doable. I mean, yeah. you read like one page a day. Yeah, every month, every month a new book. Yeah, 
I, I was like, no, nah, it's, it's too much. Uh, I'm gonna re- I'm gonna I'm gonna pay off my library fine. That's what I'm gonna do. Yeah. How much yeah. is your library fine? It's like thirty six dollars. How about that's what? doable. That's How doable. How did you even get it up to that, that much? much? Mine's at like four bucks because I rented out like two bucks. I just, I, I, I had like, uh, I don't know, Animal Farm out uh, like 10 years ago and I still, I still. You just didn't give it back. I just you never gave it back. You still have it? Which is what happened in Animal Farm. The yeah. guy took, you know, the guy who was supposed to be Stalin and he never gave it back. <laughs> and that's actually what happened with the Soviet Union too. So, you know. Okay, let's yeah. Talk about, yeah let's so talk that's, about I just, I just took the book out of the library. I read it. It influenced me so much. I'm like. I'm going to repeat the actions there you in go. this. Yeah. You got re- like, to repeat history. Exactly. That's like what we've been talking about. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So I'm going to pay off that. That's going to be my goal this year. Yeah. Um, I don't know what other ones. Uh, what, are, what are some cliche ones? Um, um, like working out. It's definitely cliche. I wonder how many people actually stop working out. If you've started to work out and just stopped randomly because you feel like that's not a good resolution for you, comment below. Yeah. <laughs> do it. That's definitely like a huge one is working out I actually started getting back into it like I took like a month off for uh, December but, yeah. like I was doing heavy uh, before that yeah. but I've actually got back into it but I'm doing it in the morning now oh yeah so it's very interesting doing it in the morning you, you work out be, like before you yeah, start before, your day yeah before I go to work because oh, I start I start work at 9 so I have to leave like at least by like 8.20 to get to work but, that's, so I wake up at 7 that's they say that gives you like an edge that you a little bit a little bit yeah right? it's like doing a little bit of cocaine in the morning mm-hmm. but you don't have to, without the cocaine just yeah. straight working out. I've never done either cocaine or workout. No, I've worked out <laughs> a couple of times, but I've done cocaine a couple of times. <laughs> I've done a, I've done a little bit of meth. Uh, yeah. Right. yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, from coming from BC, I wouldn't be surprised if you did cocaine or meth. No. Yeah. No. Um, I think, I think there's actually more of a workout. Like the stereotype is like everybody, everybody hippies, but it's more like in BC, everyone's like, let's go hiking. You know, it's yeah. like that. It's it's a lot a lot more workout than you'd expect. Have you ever been hiking before? I've gone a couple times. Uh, I I enjoy hiking more than I enjoy like I don't know uh, you know swimming or other outdoor activities. Yeah. Do you know how to swim? I know how to swim. Oh. I'm not very good <laughs> at it. I can I can do. You flail your arms around like oh my god help me. I've once uh, I once went for a swim. Um, it was in a lake, and yeah. and it was after we biked for a couple hours. We were on bicycles for a couple hours, mm-hmm. and we went for the swim in a lake. And I guess I was so sore that at one point when we were swimming, yeah. we weren't even swimming aggressively. I think I started seizing up like my 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 legs and my butt. My I've never had my butt seize like, up. Yeah, yeah. And I and I started drowning, and then uh, I had to get I had to get pulled out by my friend. Did they like do mouth to mouth to you and everything? Uh, no, uh, and they were suspicious that that was part of my plan. <laughs> but uh, you're just like, okay, get off of me! Like I'm fine, I'm fine. Yeah. I was just never invited to that meetup group because I wasn't uh, I wasn't able to meet the physical requirements. <laughs> yeah, um, that's right. That's why you do stand up comedy, right? Yeah, there's no physical requirement at all. Uh, yeah, although um, I think if uh, if it's standing room only, if it's a yeah. show that's like sold out and you're like seventh or eighth in the lineup. Like, it you is. should get paid a little more than the other ads because you're standing on your feet. Yeah. And I'm not going to bring my good, like, running shoes to stand because then you're going to see those, sh- they're dirty, you know. Yeah. <laughs> you don't want to see those. I'm going to bring shitty, no, no, uh, no sole shoes. Yeah. And then it's going to hurt my, my knees. So. Yeah, it's not good for your knees. Yeah. Or yeah. your back or anything. Yeah. You just feel sore. At that point, I'm like, I'll just pay for a seat, yeah. you know. Yeah. You may as well. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. I don't know. Uh, I I can I can get into something real that I'm doing this year, but it might it might not be very light. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. Maybe. maybe. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Up to you. Yeah. Yeah. Why not? Okay. I started going to therapy. Okay. Yeah. I don't have any jokes or anything. Um, but Are you sure. Like, isn't therapy just a joke? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, therapy is very serious. My therapist might be watching this, so don't you know? Because yeah. I, I go I got ghosted before by a therapist. You know, oh, yeah. when you try and find a therapist, it's kind of like you got a message and like tell them a little bit about yourself, and then they're all busy, you mm-hmm. know. And even this therapist, when I went to her for the first time, yeah. the first thing she told me was like, you know, therapy is a process, and we you might find that this is not the right fit for you. I mean, are you trying to already break up with me? I've only been in this room for 15 seconds. Have I already sucked the life out of it? Like, you know, I, I, I felt uh, already like a sense of abandonment. <laughs> but yeah, I'm seeing a shrink. Do you know, by the way, why they call them a uh, shrink? Because they shrink your attitude? It's actually close to reality. It's because in the like ancient tribal days, there used to be somebody like a shaman called the head shrinker. And oh, is that yeah. like little head thingies that people like chop off and... These are the clients that we deal with. 
These are the successful ones. Exactly. You don't have to worry about your problems anymore. Similar, similar. You would oh, come okay. to them and you'd be like, ah, I'm feeling a little bit depressed. And then they would put like these heated like metal uh, plates on your head. And it would literally try and diminish the size of your head in order to diminish the size. And they were called head shrinkers. And that's if you had insurance. You know, you would oh, go to them. Okay. If, if you're broke, you just had to ask your buddy to like squeeze your head a little bit. Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> so that's what they're called. That's what they're called shrinks. Like, what if your buddy's like the mountain from Game of Thrones and he squeezes a little bit too hard? That that then he's like the he's <laughs> fucking Freud. The people go to him like that's the guy I want. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. So yeah, I started doing that. Yeah. Um that I've gone it's gonna be my second time on Monday, so I've gone really? once. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um how was that first experience? It's it's good. Um, again, like, did you feel like you got something out of it? You're like, I, I, I could, did. I, I could talk to a comedian about the exact same stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I did because um, I had to be honest. Like, um, like we talked a bit about about uh, feeling emotions. Mm-hmm. I feel like when I'm with a friend, I'll always try and make jokes and something like that. Yeah. Um, and there, like, it was interesting. Uh, she was like, just just feel the emotion and like stay in it. Mm. Uh, and I was like scared to like cry, but then I started crying. Uh, and, and she's like, she's like, um, there's so many emotions going on with me right now. Yeah, like yeah, was. it was overwhelming. It was overwhelming. Um, and, and she's like, what about at home? Do you ever do that at home? I'm like, no, not really. Like, I feel like my girlfriend has seen me cry a couple times, but it's not the same. Like, I saw my girlfriend. Like, my girlfriend really, when she cries, she like it. It's like. Uh, it like it looks painful. It looks it, lo- it looks like she like after she looks hungover for three hours. She looks like she needs to take like a B twelve and she's gonna wear a hoodie for yeah. the rest of the night. You know that's what yeah. you know. It looks it looks much more uh, much more of a process than when I when I have a couple tears and then I, and I push it down. You yeah, know? <laughs> right. Like every man should just push yeah. it right back down. So I guess I guess that's probably pretty common. That's yeah. what we were talking about. Mm-hmm. On the first day, she gave me some strategies, but yeah. I, don't, I don't know. The first one was um, oh, you actually have these. Written, I wrote this down. down strategies. I wrote this down. Uh, the first one is called like uh, just observation. Yeah. You're just trying to like observe what you're feeling. Okay. Uh, and and just kind of be like very objective, like outside your body. This is what, but it's hard. She was like asking me, "What are you feeling?" And I'm like, I don't, I don't know. It's like confusion. A, it's like, <laughs> like, why are you asking me? That? It's like it's like tasting a soup. And then being like, what's what's in this? And I'm like, I'm not a fucking chef. You're a <laughs> chef. You tell me. <laughs> you tell me what you put in me. Yeah. You know, you, you, I'm, I'm going to talk and you tell me what's this. Okay. Yeah. Um, and so observation. <laughs> and, and there are certain things that you'll say though, that you'll see the therapist. They're like, they're, their eyes light up because it's kind of like a trigger word. Like if you say something like guilt, they'll be like, ding, you know, yeah. <laughs> like, that's, oh, so you're feeling, you know, that, um, so there are certain things that, that will make them kind of observe you better. Yeah. So yeah, so the first thing is like, you say, if third person kind of the fe- the observation of what, what's happening, mm-hmm. uh, and you try and the second thing, notice the feelings themselves. So, uh, you come back kind of to first person, you're like, this is what I feel after yeah. you've observed it. Okay. Um, so, so sometimes something happens in that process yeah. between like coming outside the third person and like obser- observing mm-hmm. to like coming back to first person and saying how you feel. Uh, I think it's very difficult. It seems like a process. I feel like I can leave. I can like and observe and be like, oh, this person, this like, is kind are of you, happening. Are you kicking yourself out, kind of like in um, Doctor Strange when that woman like pushes that like Doctor Strange out of the body like that astral, exactly that's like exactly. is it an astral like form is that what you're doing exactly it's like it's like the soul of me is coming out yeah and it's observing and it's, so it's judging you it's so your judging, soul is judging yourself exactly the soul okay. is coming out of my body <laughs> and it's like you motherfucker da 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 you know um, and, and it does it basically looks at the last like 20 minutes of me and observes that mm-hmm. right but it's not in the moment. It's outside. Yeah, outside. So then you have to come back and say, how do you feel right now? That's mm-hmm. impossible. The soul just stays outside. You know, in order for me to feel the emotion and like cry and stuff, I have to be in the moment. Yeah. Now I can't observe myself. Yeah. So if I'm doing that, if I'm letting it out, you can't ask me what I'm feeling. Because uh, I don't know. I'm in it. Yeah. If I come out of it, I'm not going to be crying anymore. Yeah. I'm going to observe. And I'm going to tell you. So I think my therapist is pushing yeah. me to become a split personality. Yeah. To be able to be outside and inside. inside yeah. Um, and uh, so you know, maybe maybe she's right. Maybe it's not a good fit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> maybe. Um, Do you think that everybody has a split personality though? Because you got to think like, are people really truly who they are with somebody else versus when they're at home? I think because how many people actually just talk to themselves when they're at home? Because I do that all the time. 
But I just, just like talk to myself just like normally. Like I talk to myself in different voices. Oh yeah. Yeah. Really? Yeah, I do like character voices and stuff. Okay. So, but like I'll just talk like I normally would, but like as in a character kind of voice. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. Right. What kind of character? Uh, like I'll do like sometimes I'll do like a little bit of annoying kind of voice. I'll just like talk like this a little bit, you know. Just like, Wait, you think it's annoying? So you a little bit, but or like I'll talk. So like, you'll like annoy a <laughs> I'll annoy myself a little bit, or like I'll do like a smeagol, like the streets and Jerseys, oh, they're precious. Okay, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so I kind of like talk like that. And and, and uh, I just like have fun with like my voice. So I just like play around with it. And you just watching dishes and you you talk to yourself. Yeah, like all the time. Like, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Or like whenever I'm in the shower. Okay. Yeah. I think that's very actory. Yeah. I think I think that's probably a stable of like. I gotta practice the tool, you know. Mm-hmm. I'll talk to myself sometimes. Am I the tool? Well, um, I I, I, like don't, I don't think you're a tool. I've heard things. Oh, okay. But uh, <laughs> where did you hear the six from? <laughs> you know, out and about. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> uh, on, on the Twitter sphere, um, but I I think I think uh, as a I'm not really an actor. As a comic, like I'll talk to myself when I'm trying to work some bit out. Yeah. Like, I'll talk to myself, but it's just be me. It's yeah. Just, I'm just. I think. People aren't necessarily split personalities. They're like filters of themselves. So like it's you. Okay. And then with your parents, you kind of have a filter. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, with uh, your boss, you have a filter. And mm-hmm. with this person, you have this filter. So it's you, but like you'll, you'll filter. You just have like different like lenses yeah, of yeah. like, okay, what's going to be filtered out between like, then you have like 200 filters for like exactly. that one person where you're like, I can't say anything in front of this person at exactly. all or it's like, shit's gonna blow up. Exactly. You know, you're like, so you just like, don't even talk. You're like, hi. Yeah. That's it. That's a conversation. called out right now. You know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah it's, um, it's like that basically, I think. Uh, I think some people, uh, instead of like putting on a, uh, just like filtering who they are because they don't want to reveal too much. Yeah. They, they do tend to, like, try to adopt another personality. I've had moments like that when you're trying to figure out who you are. Yeah. You know? I yeah. mean, there's nothing really wrong with that. Like, especially yeah. with, like, stand-up comedians. Especially when they're trying to, like, find their voice. But kind of, like, mimic the comedians yeah. that they like. For sure. Until they eventually, like, okay, like, this is who I am. But I'm going to create, like, my own personality based off of, like, that. Yeah. Which yeah. I think is, like, really cool. I know it's it's interesting. I'll hear a comic, I'll listen to an album or a podcast, mm-hmm. um, and then it's really hard for me to actually kick their voice out. Yeah, it's like you have to because otherwise it'll influence you too much. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, you know, I'll go to a, a mic or something, a show, and I'll have a new bit, and I've wrote the bit in their voice because really? I've been listening to them too much. Yeah. and as soon as like two sentences come out, I'm like, this is not really what am I doing? Yeah. <laughs> So why don't you just like keep doing that until like you create like a voice that's sort of similar to theirs, but like it's a Dan Belkin. Well, I feel kind like of... I feel like at this point I have kind of my uh, my feelings on things. Yeah. Like I kind of uh, as soon as I, I I have a thought about a subject or something, mm. I have kind of my take on it. Yeah. Um. So hearing other podcasts or other comics uh, and hearing like their takes on it, um is good just to, like, differentiate mine, to make mine more specific. Mm-hmm. But I wouldn't want to hear their voice as I'm doing mine because they'll pull it back into being more of their take. Yeah. You know? I want to hear my... When I'm talking, I want to hear my voice. Mm-hmm. You know? Uh, I, I want to then, like, see the recording of it and, and really feel like that was me. And I'll be able to improve the things uh, just based on the jokes and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, because it's me, as opposed to if I'm if I'm in my head and I'm thinking somebody else's voice, I don't even know what to start improving it because I'm like I'm not even really doing my act, you know, it's not really me. Yeah. So um, it's like it's like you gotta scrap it basically. Mm-hmm. That's the worst feeling when you wrote something and you go and you do it, and it might even get laughs, and then yeah. you you like watch it later, mm-hmm. and you're like this doesn't really fit in with anything. With anything. Not even because it doesn't like, fit in uh, thematically. Yeah. But like I'm doing something here. Yeah. Actively, that's not me. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm talking in a certain rhythm or something. Mm-hmm. It's like, that's, that's fucking this yeah. guy, you know? Have you ever had, like, any jokes that, um, like, popular comedians have have said? Yeah. 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 Um, I, sorry, I got I to just send one thing out. Oh, yeah, no okay? worries. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we're just about to wrap up right okay, now. Okay, so, 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 yeah. 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 Um, uh, have I ever had, yeah, I've had, uh, definitely, because I, I, talk about you know kind of like uh being 
Jewish. I've heard some some jokes about those things that I talk about. Okay, uh, they're similar, but I feel like my take uh, is more specific to my experience as a you know a Soviet Jew. Yeah. Um, and, I mean, like, nobody's going to live your life. Yeah, no, you, one's, so. no one's going to... You know, I talk about, like, you know, taking the bus, for example. Yeah. And then... Um, I love that show. Yeah, right. but, but you hear you hear similar takes. You yeah. hear people talk about because the ads it, that they see. Yeah. You know? I mean, like, I talk about ads, but I talk about, like, ads that I see in the path. Yeah. So I came across, like, that one Alzheimer's ad. Uh, it was like, a, it, was, it said Walk for Alzheimer's. And I thought, like, why did they call it, like, a Walk for Alzheimer's? So did they just, like, start off as a run and forget why they were running? So they yeah. just made it a walk? For like, sure. I don't know why they called it like a walk for Alzheimer's. Why don't they just call it a walk to remember? <laughs> uh, yes, that's good. Yeah. Um, but again, like you, you think like, you know, that's that's me. Yeah. And I'll have jokes like that. I'm like, that's that's me. And you'll hear other takes that are similar. So mm-hmm. it's very important. That's why to like continue listening to your own voice and continue refining it. Because mm-hmm. then the more specific your takes get, the more uh, authentic they become. The less it's easy to hear that in other people at the beginning um yeah. when you're when you're first starting out mm-hmm. um the takes will be similar yeah you know because we all have shared experiences especially when you're trying to be relatable mm-hmm. when you're trying to relate to people um some comics don't try to relate so much yeah they you know they do something more different you know it's a, a character or uh maybe they just they don't care if they relate like I'm just let's just get us some jokes yeah yeah yeah. I feel with those comics um, they usually they have uh, right off the bat a more specific take either Mm -hmm. it's just more alt you know it's more like oh I've never seen this thing before yeah or it's just like it's so them and they don't care if you're relate Uh, and might be just angry or something like that yeah and it's like okay well that's that's very specific Mm -hmm. you know Um, but I think the average sort of median voice in comedy is going to be very similar and you're going to see a lot of crossovers yeah because like there's so many comedians and there's so many like topics that you can really like talk about so the chances of like somebody bouncing the their their ideas off of like your ideas it's like it's very close like somebody will talk about something that you said like i always talk like earlier like when i started doing stand-up um i was coming up with a joke um, cause I've only been doing this for a year. So I came up with a joke about like people always complaining about like who they cast for movies and all that stuff. And uh, I ended up talking about like how Brian Cranston character was getting, uh, was getting attacked at, like in the upside with Kevin Hart, like him and Kevin Hart. Mm-hmm. So I, when a fucking Bill Burr's paper tiger came out, he ended up like talking about oh, that really? specific topic. Yeah. And I'm like, son of a bitch. But then again, like, I don't, I don't like hate that he took that topic. I like the fact that. I'm on. The, I'm getting on the same level as like these guys because clearly, if they're coming up with these kind of jokes, and like if I'm coming up with similar kind of things without like being around them and what they're thinking, it's just like okay, clearly, yeah, I'm on a good path of like figuring all of that out. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, I think basically watching your own sets, recording your own sets, mm-hmm. and finding moments where you feel really happy with what you're saying, what you're sounding yeah. like, what you're saying, and then just trying to like do more of that specifically mm. and then I try not to listen to other albums or podcasts uh, if I have like s- a period where I haven't written something in a while yeah then I'll try not to do that mm-hmm. uh, I try to write as often as I can every day whatever yeah. but uh, how do you find that you like just sit your ass down and be like okay I'm gonna write for like an hour two hours no I try to do like 15 minutes oh minutes. okay um yeah, I try to do like 15, 20 every day. Yeah. Uh, but there are periods where it doesn't happen. You know, like I feel like I've been pretty good recently, mm-hmm. but th- there have been times where it's like, oh, two weeks where I haven't written. So if that happens, if I have like two or three weeks where I haven't written anything, yeah. the first thing I'll do is, well, I probably should not. If, I, if I'm if i going to write my own stuff, yeah. I got to stop listening to these albums or podcasts. Mm-hmm. They're going to they're gonna influence me too much, especially because I haven't thought in my own voice in a while. Mm-hmm. You know, so I'll turn that off. That'll be the first step. I'll turn that off. Yeah, I'll put something else on. Put on music, whatever. Just I can listen to other podcasts, just not stand up, mm-hmm. uh, not comedy. Sorry, um, and just get my headspace back to like where it's my thoughts and my yeah. my thinking, and then that'll be the start, and then I'll try and make it like make small goals. Mm-hmm. Back to that. Yeah, back fifteen to small, minutes. You got to make it small goals. Fifteen minutes yeah. every day. All right. Yeah, before bed. You guys, yeah. If you guys have small goals, write them down in the comments below. Let us know your goals so that we know. And then we can keep you like accountable to them. 
Uh, I want to thank you so much for actually coming out. Yeah, for thank sure. Thank you, Dan. Um, you guys can follow Dan on Instagram. Yeah. At Daniel.m.belkin. What's the M stand for? Uh, Matt McKenzie? No. Uh, I, D- Daniel Belkin was saying, I don't have a middle name. Oh, okay. But uh, my mom's uh, maiden name is Manievich. So oh, okay. So you just fucked it up. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. So yeah, you guys can follow him. I'll have a little banner for you so that people can see it as cool, well. Cool, cool. Um, and like, also check out his show, In Too Deep. Uh, next one is the 16th, not the 18th, the 16th. Definitely come check that out. It's or on Col- February 20th, if you don't make it this one. Yeah, it's uh, it's on College Street at Moms of the Word. What, uh, what time? 9, nine is 9 the p.m. doors. 9 p.m. 9 p.m. is the doors, 9.30 is the show. Yeah. Yeah, perfect. It's a free show, so definitely come out, check it out. It's really funny. He always has some killer comedians that come on. Um, yeah, yeah. You get the best best comics in the city coming in, and best comics. And we also got newer comics that I have been making on the debuts. Show. I have been on the show. <laughs> yeah, you made your your uh, one, one, one yeah yeah. See, I'm technically one of the best comics in the city because I got on the show. Mm. Boom, just like that. But thank you guys so much for tuning in. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. Um, I'm gonna have like a little thing that pops up. Um, also, this happens every Monday, 9 a.m. Um, subscribe so that you can check out more comedians that I'll be having on. I have a great list of comedians that are going to be up and coming or that have already been established as comedians in Toronto and in the GTA. So, guys, thank you so much. Let's peel out.